So I've finally been able to get my hands on Leonardo AI. And today, we're gonna take a look at Leonardo AI and compare it to another tool you might be familiar with, that being Midjourney. Now, Leonardo AI is a fantastic tool. Today, I'll just show you a beginner type video just to kind of get your hands dirty, see the type of quality and images you can make and create with Leonardo AI. Now, the thing to keep in mind when it comes to this app it is going to be a little bit more user friendly than if you've ever tried Midjourney. So that's great for beginners or novices or people like me who just want something simple. The major difference between Midjourney and Leonardo AI is that with Leonardo AI, you can use everything within their own app, their website. However, in Midjourney, you have to use the Discord server and be familiar how to type out specific prompts to get exactly what you want. I'll show you within Leonardo AI how it really is user friendly and more beginner friendly than other tools but if you're just starting to get into this AI technology and it's moving at the speed of light then Leonardo AI might be your best bet now one of my favorite things about Leonardo AI is that it has some introductory prompts and characteristics known as their models and what exactly a model is it's going to be an image a characteristic that a prompt will contain so for example if you want something that has more of a comic look or more of a happy animal type look or more of a paper look 3d look you can click that model and then once you type in your prompt, your prompt, your personal image is going to contain at least those characteristics of the model you just chose. I'll show you exactly how to do that. So the first thing I want to show you guys is take a look at some of these examples directly off of Leonardo's homepage. And on the left hand side, you can see it's highlighted with a nice purple gradient color called trending. Now look how realistic this picture is. And let me give you an example of the prompts. So here are the prompt details. You can see it in the top paragraph. But the one thing I like about Leonardo AI is that you can also provide it with a negative prompt, meaning here are the prompt details you want your image to look like, but then as far as the negative prompt is concerned, you can type in a few things that you don't want it to have. One of the things I see quite often is this prompt right here, two faces. So I see that in almost every prompt. Writing two faces down as a negative prompt means it's not going to generate an image that has two faces. That's one example. Now check this out. I'll click on this cat here and then you could see another example. Now one thing I want to show you, when I talked about models earlier, so right down here where it says fine tune model, it says generate with this model, fine tuned model. Dream Shaper 3.2. That's the type of model this image was created from. Now let me go back to this girl and you can see this says generate with this model. RPG 4.0. That was this girl was generated with this model called RPG 4.0. What exactly do I mean by models? Let me scroll back to the top and on the first row, that's one of the first things you're going to see on the homepage. It says featured models and you could scroll to the left and right and you can kind of see what I was talking about earlier. So the very first option is going to be Leonardo Diffusion. This model's description is a model with incredible shading and contrast, great at both photos and artistic styles. Okay, so when I click on this model, you can see Based off of this model, these are the specific characteristics of this model. And as I scroll down, you could see more image examples of what some of your photos might look like when you generate your image with this model. This one's called Leonardo Diffusion. But look how different we can get. So let's go ahead and click on Dream Shaper version 5. It's the same thing. I can click on this model and then I could get examples of what other models look like. So just to show you how different things really can get, let me hit this arrow and scroll over one and I'm going to click on paper art style. Okay. This is paper art style model. And now you can look at these images and see the difference. So now let me click on RPG 4.0. And now you can also generate with this model in mind. So as I scroll over at the top, you can just kind of see some of the examples you'll get based off of your selection. If I clicked on Illustration V2 and I select generate with this model, then any image I create are going to have these type of characteristics here. The same thing if I select Spirit Creatures, you can see this is the type of image my photos will look like here. So Leonardo makes it very helpful and very easy for you to get started. So if you have a specific image or look in mind, 
mind, you could choose it and create it based off of these featured models, and you won't have to get lost in your head or get lost with what sort of description exactly you need to put into the prompt. So this serves as a very good starting point, and I found it quite useful to use in Leonardo AI. Now that's what I mean when it comes to models. We'll do some really cool examples, but the next thing is, let me just show you quickly about the pricing structure with Leonardo AI. In the top left-hand corner, you could see where it says I have 150 tokens right here. If I hover over the question mark, you can see that it resets in six hours. That's very good because every single day, you're going to get an additional 150 tokens that resets daily. So if you ever exceed or exhaust your daily token limit, rest assured, tomorrow's a new day and you get a fresh 150 tokens yet again to play with and try Leonardo AI. If I click on this upgrade button here, I'll just show you quickly some of the pricing structures. Check this out. So you can see that free is zero dollars a month forever. You get 150 fast generations per day, which basically is 150 tokens. Now, I'll get into more details about this later because one token doesn't necessarily equal one image created. It's like an allowance based off of what type of feature you want. For example, to generate an image will cost you a token, but then if you want to upgrade its quality, that will cost you an additional token or tokens. And then if you go over to the right hand side, you'll see the next level up is going to be Apprentice for $10 a month. You can see that it goes from 150 tokens to 8,500 tokens per month. So, due to math, it's still an exceptional deal. And then as we go on to the right hand side, you can see that the last two options are going to be for very heavy users. But I don't want to really focus on this too much today, because again, this is going to be more of an introductory video, an introduction to Leonardo AI. So as we go back in here, you can see that we also have style consistent generations. You also get image to image. You can simply click and drag an image in Leonardo AI, and it will create an AI generated image matching those same qualities and concepts. Let's go back and let's go ahead and generate our first image. So at the top, let's go ahead and look at a few of the featured models we can use. We have Leonardo Diffusion all the way over to the very last option. I can scroll to the very end. A lot of different options, user friendly to help you get started. So to make this simple, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to start with just Leonardo Diffusion. I'm going to click on this and then it pops up and it shows you some examples of what it looks like. If you like what you see so far, go ahead and select generate with this model by clicking here. I generate with this model before and you can see what's really cool about this it says generation history yesterday here is what I generated yesterday using this specific model Leonardo diffusion let's go ahead and generate one more so if I come back to the left hand side this left column right now it's gonna generate for me one image if I select two now look over here on the right hand side this will use four tokens. So to keep it simple for today, let's go ahead and select one. A lot of your token cost will vary based on the characteristics of the image that you're selecting to make. So go back over here. Let's just go back to high quality 1024 by 1024. You can also adjust it by using this drag button over here. So you could drag it back and forth, but let's just make it easy and select this. Now we also have on the left hand side something called guidance scale. If you hover over that, what this does is it selects how strongly your prompt is weighted. Now, image to text is something I'll show you guys in a second. And let's go ahead and select a new one. I'm going to delete this one here and I'm going to paste in a new prompt, a cute magical flying dog. So let's just go ahead and see what this can generate for us. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit generate on the right hand side. Okay, that's pretty cool. A cute magical flying dog. I like these images a lot, but watch this. So say I like this first image. There's one more thing I want to keep in mind to show you guys. Now watch this. So I really like this prompt. Say I like everything it came up with so far. However, I don't like the fact that it added these wings to it. That is where the add negative prompt comes in. Now come over here and click and select add negative prompt. Then what you can do is add a negative prompt now. It's going to keep everything up here that I entered into my prompt, but now if I want to remove these wings, check this out. Type what you don't want to see in the image. Wings, okay? I don't want to see those wings in the image. I went ahead, I want to get rid of the wings on this dog. So in my negative prompt, I added wings. I take the wings off. I also changed this up to where I wanted it to be nighttime. So I added nighttime background, galaxy, and stars. Okay, that's awesome. That's perfect. So it did exactly what I needed it to do. I said no wings, it took the wings off, and then I told it I wanted it to have a nighttime background, galaxy, and stars, and it did it perfectly. So let's just say I want this image and I wanna go ahead and keep it. I can click the image, get a closer look, make sure I like it. Yes, I love it, let's go back. 
Now watch this, check this out. Hover over the image that you created and you could see a few things. Creative upscale. This can improve images during the upscaling process. This will cost five tokens. Over here, I can download the image right away. That's of no cost to me. There it is. Let's try a couple things out and do creative upscale. Let me click this. And now it's going to deduct five tokens from me. Improve images during the upscaling process. So I did the upscale image. In order to see the results, hover back over the image and then view it by clicking it. You can click on it and you can view the upscaled image. Okay, same thing. View my unzoomed image. Do you see the difference with my unzoomed image? So let me open up the comparison one. Here's the difference between the two. On the left hand side, the original image, it's the dog and it's the galaxy. But now that I did unzoomed image, check this out. Now you can notice a little bit of a difference. It adds more detail in the background. Now I have that same dog. It adds at the top here, another sort of flying dog and then more of like a border around it. Let's go ahead and see what happens if I choose remove the background and see how good that works. So again, hover over the image and at the bottom, one of the bottom options, I'm gonna click this button in the middle called remove background. This will cost me two tokens. Hover over it and go back over your option and click view remove background image. Look at this. Now, that did a phenomenal job of completely removing the background. Here is the original image on the left hand side. And now in the middle, it removed the background. Okay, now let's move on to the next thing. Check out how cool this is to utilize the image to image. Check this out. So what I'm gonna do is take this woman over here and I'm gonna click and drag it and bring it over to my screen, right? I'm clicking and I'm dragging and I'm gonna bring it over and upload it on the left hand side in this column. So now you could see her here. Okay, there she is. What I'm gonna do is I am going to utilize this image here to generate something new, except this time now I'll change the model up. So instead of Leonardo Diffusion, I'll select something else. I'll come down and I'll select custom model. I'll click on select custom model and I'll see over here as this window opens up, we have a really cool feature too called community models. So we talked about the models earlier, but now you also have community models, which are the models that other community users within Leonardo AI have created for you. So not only can you use Leonardo's, but you can use other community generated models as well. I'm going to change it up to RPG 4.0. It says this model is best at creating RPG character portraits with the ability for great photo realism. So I'll select this one. And as you can see on the left hand side, I still have my uploaded image. So what do I want to type in a prompt? Something similar, but this time I'll say a woman with brunette hair. It's using my uploaded image as a base. And now look at that. Now it generated this image over here. As you can see, on the left hand side, you have a woman who has still light brown hair, dirty blonde hair. Now this new woman that we created, and now she has more of a darker hair, a brunette hair, and she's a different look. What if I put a woman with blonde hair? She pops up. Okay, let's try one more thing. Let's just try to add a few more features. A young Italian woman with dark hair. I hit generate, and let's see what it can do. It's still staying on the same characteristics of the photo I uploaded. Look at that, a young Italian woman with dark hair. Okay, let's try something else. I'm gonna upload a new image this time. I'm gonna now upload um, some shoes. On the left hand side, you could see I uploaded these shoes. These are Nike Air Jordan shoes. And this time I'll go back to Leonardo Diffusion. I'll hit generate with this model. Now check this out. So now I have my model back at Leonardo Diffusion. My image is still there. This time I'll say white and blue Air Jordan shoes. It kept the same characteristics. So now let's try something else with this mule I uploaded. Let's try a cute animal character. I'll utilize the cute animal characters model and I'll add a few more details to it. I am gonna copy this prompt keeping the image that I have on my computer screen. I'm gonna paste it into this prompt and then just delete a few things. It says a cute hyper-realistic baby jaguar. I'm gonna replace this with a baby mule wearing hip hop clothes. I'm selecting mountain background and everything else I will keep the same. Okay, it doesn't really look that good as far as a mule. So let me change the word and I'm just gonna put a donkey. I'm gonna remove baby mule and I'm gonna generate it with the word donkey instead. This one's pretty cool. It took the features of my uploaded photo, mule. I changed the fine-tuned model to a cute animal character and I just said hyper realistic donkey wearing clothes and it kept a lot of things similar but it also kept my prompt looking good. Once you really get used to this tool Leonardo AI and really get your hands full with using it you're gonna find it quite useful to use and you're gonna want to dive in a lot further. Some of the images you can make are quite realistic and very impressive. I just showed you how you can copy and paste prompts 
from Airtable or Google Sheets to save them and use them for later. So I did that exact thing. So what I did exactly was that I used the same type of prompt and model as this little Jaguar on the right hand side that you see on my screen. And so what I did was I copied and pasted the prompt for this Jaguar and I replaced a few things. So instead of using some adjectives like cute, I replaced it with a powerful determined mule. Okay, so one thing to keep in mind, if I upload an image to image prompt that was already created in an AI generated tool, it's gonna actually work a little bit better. I'm uploading this cat that's actually from Leonardo AI and I will change it from a cat to a lion. Check that out, that's pretty cool. So it kept the same features of this cat and I changed the model to a cute animal character. You could see it did a pretty good job. You could see it was made in Dream Shaper 3.2. So let me go ahead and generate with this model, okay? Now I hit generate with this model. It's still keeping this cat in my upload and now keeping lion as my prompt. Now let's hit generate and see if it makes it any different. Now look at the difference. Everything remained the same, even my image upload, and I just changed it. My fine-tuned model is now Dream Shaper 3.2. And so now you could see the difference in a fine-tuned model will add a different sort of unique characteristic to it. Thanks again for watching. If you like this video, please hit that subscribe button because you'll be the first to know when videos like this come out. But until then, we'll see you next time. Rise up,